Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in and coming back and watching. I appreciate it. Hope your day is going super well and I've got a fun video for you today. Well, it was fun for me. Let me put it that way. Um, I've got a photo here that I spent a little time on in Luminar 4, jacked around and came up with something that I liked. And let me show you the photo. Here you go. It's a rusty old beat up abandoned truck on Route 66 somewhere in New Mexico. And I love this kind of stuff. I just absolutely adore it. And uh, so, you know, you got two options, I think, when you come across something like this. You can kind of go subtle, low-key, just kind of smooth, simple workflow. Or you could just go over the top and crush it and just kick that ass out of that thing and have a lot of fun doing it. So which one do you think I did? Good guess. Yeah, option number two is definitely what I went with. So here's my final result. It's a little crazy, it's a little over the top, and by little, I mean uh, quite a bit. So um, I did some fun things in Luminar 4. I'm gonna reset all these filters and then we'll walk through it. Okay, here we go, back to Luminar 4 reset with my base image. So the first thing I did, which is something I, I really never did in Luminar 3, um, and that was take a uh, image from Luminar and jump over to Aurora HDR, and, and that's what I did with this one. I went edit, and plugins and Aurora HDR, and then it'll take the image over there. Now, keep in mind, uh, Luminar 4 is the same as Luminar 3. I'm gonna say create HDR, and that is that, um, let me full screen this so you can see it better, uh, and that is that if you send a set of brackets over, it will not round trip it. You still gotta finish it, save it from Aurora, and then drag it into the folder that you have your Luminar images in. I do hope they fix that. Uh, but um, it's the same now as it was in Luminar 3. But here we go, I'm in Aurora HDR 2019, and I really, I mean, again, this is just an old beat up car, rusted, just jacked up paint job, dirty, grungy, nothing calls for HDR like that. So I just went to HDR Enhance, and I just bumped up to HDR Clarity and the HDR Smart Structure, and all I'm really doing is just jacking up that truck and some of the grass because that's what I wanted to do. I just wanted to kind of get crazy with it. So uh, that was effectively it. So I just hit apply and it does round trip a single image in that way. So um, once it finish, finishes calculating, it drops it back in. And now I'm back in Luminar 4. And uh, in just a second here, there you go. There's my photo. So here's the before and the after. And then of course, this is where I get into the fun stuff in Luminar 4, which is I started with sky replacement, so I'm going to click on sky replacement. I'm going to scoop, uh, choose my sky, and I'm going to go with, i got to look at my notes, dramatic sunset four. Here we go, and boom, it's in. So now you may notice there's a spot in the sky, and my base image had a spot in the sky. If you saw that previous video that I did with the birds, you'll note that things that are in the sky, it will leave in the sky. Unfortunately, spots is one of them, but also birds, which is a potentially positive easy enough to fix with the eraser later, which I will do, but I wanted you to be aware of that. Also, if you notice over here, some of these clouds, um, because that base sky was so busy with so many clouds, some of these clouds didn't get uh, covered up by the new sky. So there's the before and the after, especially if you look right in here, you can see a little bit of the same pattern. Um, it's not massive, and to me it makes no difference whatsoever in this photo but I just wanted to point that out that um, it may not recognize all of that sky as sky because if you look at the base photo, it's got a lot going on in the sky. So just FYI, but here I am now with a new sky. And so I always do that first before I go do other stuff. So what I'll do then is generally my workflow is to go these four tabs in order and work through the filters. So, oops, tools, not filters. I'm gonna start with light and I've gotta look at my notes. I warmed it up a smidge and a little bit of tint as well. I did a fairly good amount on smart contrast, so something like that, like high 50s, uh, something like that. All right, again, I'm going over the top, so this is gonna potentially hurt your eyes. If you have sunglasses, you might wanna get them. Um, AI Enhance was next, I think, yep, uh, AI Enhance, and so I've got uh, about nine or 10 there and about 30 or so. I'm actually using Sky Enhancer. Even though I put a new sky in, it actually does make a small impact on that new sky. So just keep that in mind. If you add a new one, you can still use a Sky Enhancer. Uh, AI Structure is next, and I'm gonna give this a little bit of that kind of love. And again, I'm just kind of pushing the envelope here. 
I'm even gonna boost it because I'm just cranking up that detail, especially in that foreground because I want to. <laughs> That's why, I just want to. Uh, color is next, and I love my color, so I'm gonna give it about a 28 or so on Vibrance. Just pop in that excitement. Uh, but the thing is, is I need to go into the greens, and I wanna tone that down. These greens are out of control. They're kind of HDR, neon, toxic green, whatever you wanna call it. So I'm gonna take the hue down, uh, something about like that. I'm gonna take the saturation down, something about like that, and even the luminance down, something about like that. So um, I might pull that hue back a little bit. Um, all I'm trying to do is just get the green to not be so over the top. I want the truck to be over the top. I like that the clouds are busy and a lot going on um, and all that, but I just wanted to tone down some of the grass because it's, it's a little busy um, for this image, I think. Uh, and specifically because it was so bright and saturated and kind of that toxic greenish yellow, I wanted to tone that down. Um, so that's really it for that. And then I went down here to Landscape Enhancer and got Golden Hour and gave that about a 30. Um, and honestly, I mean, I like the photo like that. Again, going over the top, I'm gonna say it 100 times. So you can just puke all you want. If you don't like this, that's totally cool. Um, it's intentionally crazy. So. I'm now back to the creative filter because I did sky replacement first, but I do that and then I jump to uh, the essentials tab to get into all of those tools. But now I'm back over here to creative and I just kind of like to do them in an order. And I think that's one of the nice things about Luminar 4 is that they're all just kind of lined up. So it kind of naturally uh, uh, makes you uh, sort of mentally, you kind of want to flow through them in the order they're aligned. I find uh, so far that it's working really well for me like that. So. Here I am. Here, here I am on the uh, the what is it called? Creative tab. I was about to say essentials. Essentials is the first tab. Second one is creative. Whew, okay, sun rays. I use sun rays, and I know everybody was like, "Oh, please, for the love of God, I'm gonna poke my eyes out with a sharp stick." Quit using sun rays. That was at Luminar three. Sky replacement is the new sun rays. It's the new uh, sexy girl in town. Terrible analogy. My apologies. Um, but anyway, it's the one that's getting all the attention. Sunrays is uh, that from Luminar 3, but you know what? It's still a cool filter, and hey, I'm going over the top. Why not just go all the way over the top and down the other side? So I'm gonna say place sun center, and it defaults to there, which is actually pretty close to the center of where it needs to be, so I'm gonna say done, and so my sun center is in the right place. Uh, now I'm gonna do a mount of about 17, and I've got to look at all my notes here. Overall, I'm taking that down to about 25. This length to about 25. Uh, and this is all, I'm gonna leave penetration at 40. Number of sun rays, I'm going up to like 75 or something, something like that. Let's say 78, I don't know. It, again, we're, we're just having fun here. Um, radius is coming down because that center is too big. Uh, so I'm gonna take that down and the glow radius is coming way down because that's also too big, and the glow amount's fine. Actually, I'm gonna take that down a little bit as well. Um, those I'm gonna leave the same, and randomize, I'm gonna do about 54, something like that. Yeah, 54, so, you know, something like that. I'm just trying to get a decent looking starburst or sunburst there. Again, I'm making it up, but you can't say, hey, a sunburst doesn't belong in the photo because well, I did, <laughs> I did put in a fake sky, but the sky had a sun in it. So sticking a, a sun on top of that sun or a sunburst on top of that sun with the sun rays filter, it makes sense. Um, logically, you may not like the image. That's cool. I don't mind. Um, we're, you know, like I said, we're all friends here. So um, I'm going to actually take a mount down as well, a little bit more, something like that. So uh, sun rays here, here we go. There's before and there's after. Not a massive difference, but something I wanted to do. Um, I'm done with um, the sun rays filter. I'm gonna go over to mystical, which you may know as image radiance. And I'm doing about a 50 something here. So let's call it about a 53. And um, actually I'll leave that at about 25, 52, 53, you know, it's about the same. Um, just trying to add a little bit of mood. Again, we're over the top, this is a fun edit. This is Jim having fun in the digital dark room, just jacking around. So uh, that's it for mystical. Then I went over to glow. I like glow. There's three different options here. You have soft focus bright, soft focus, and soft glow. I'm going to stick with soft focus bright, and I'm going to go to about 30 here, and you can kind of see what it's doing to the photo. As the name implies, it gives you a soft focus 
that's also bright. It's amazing how they name that. Uh, it does work well. Here's the before and the after. The thing I like about it, smooths out the sky a little bit, adds a little bit of drama and shadow, and I think is very complementary to the mystical filter that I used just a moment ago. So I think those two worked really well. Again, I'm creating mood and shadow and stuff where none existed, because remember, I started there. You know, interesting subject, interesting to me. Um, I like the shot. And in fact, I've edited this, I think, in a previous video a year or more ago as an HDR because I did shoot brackets. But I wanted to just do a single exposure, uh, Aurora HDR enhancement with a whole bunch of Luminar 4 stuff. And that's where I'm getting. But I'm coming along. I think we're, we're getting there. Um, and then that's it for this, uh, this tab. I'm going to skip the Portrait tab, although I do have a favorite over there known as Orton Effect. And I'm going to go over here to the Pro tab. I'm going to get Adjustable Gradient. I'm going to say Set Orientation. And I'm just going to move that up a little bit because all I'm trying to do um, and I'm going to say done. All I'm trying to do here is go to the bottom section. I'm going to increase the exposure. It was getting a little too dark there in the front. And let me see. Uh, I increased that about 28 or 30. Let's just call it a 30. Uh, and the, the warmth. Here's the other thing. If you look at the ground, very greenish yellow still. Even though I made those edits in the color filter, color tool, back on the first tab, which is Essentials. It's still a little too much, so another way to correct that is to come over here to warmth and take that down so it's, because the warmer you go, let me just show you, the warmer you go, the more yellow green you're gonna get because green, especially in grass, you'll notice this, and I've talked about this before, but grass has so much yellow in it that you can often play with the yellows on the HSL um, and impact the green significantly. So same thing here, if I were to add more warmth, which is gonna be kind of a yellowy tone, that green or that grass is going to get overdone. I want to go the other way. I want to pull it back. So I actually use the warmth uh, to go negative to make it cooler, uh, to make it more blue, which is getting it away from the yellow and a little bit more to the green. So I kind of like that. And it also kind of darkened it a little bit, which I thought was nice. I may take the vibrance down a tad. Again, uh, the, the intent here is, wow, look at that truck. What a scene. The intent is not um, you know, you're going to make me just run screaming, Jim, because there's too much color. Um, and I feel like the grass was a little too over the top, even, even for this. Um, so I pulled it back a little bit here with adjustable gradient, uh, with a reduced, um, uh, all the stuff. Well, you know, you've already seen it. So that, um, and then the last thing is I just went into split toning and I took the highlights to about a 32 or so. And that was just adding a little color to the brighter parts, which is primarily the sky. Let me show you again. There's the before and the after. It's just a little bit of color, a little bit of that sunset look. And I'm looking at my notes. That's all I got, my friend. So let me go back to the base photo. There's the photo. And I knew when I took it that I was going to have a lot of fun. I've edited this several times over the last few years. I took this, you know, two or three years ago. Um, I've edited this and other photos from the spot several times. It's just fun to do. And my intent here was complete. Hey, let's have fun. I want to get crazy. I wanted to use Aurora HDR to amp up the detail. Works great round tripping that as a single exposure, not as a bracket set. Um, and then all the filter stuff, including a new sky and oh, blah, 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 all the stuff I went through. I just made a fun photo and this was all about the fun factor. So fun factor 10, I'm going maybe 11. It goes to 11. I'm having a good time. The only thing left to do is get the eraser and get rid of that spot. I'll do that in my own time. You already know how that works, I hope. And if you don't, it's right over here on Canvas Tools. You click on that, click on eraser, and you're done. I'll save a video for that, though. I'll talk about all these tools in detail. And that's all I got for this video, my friends. I do appreciate you watching. Thank you very much. Hope you're having a super marvelous day wherever you are. Catch you soon, my friends. You know what I'm going to say. Have a great day. Take care and adios.